divs. And to designate in CSS it's an ID, you use the hash sign or the pound sign. So I am going to have a header. And remember that curly quote thing, so I'm going to set up to put something inside there. I'm not using it just yet, but I will in a minute. Um, let's see, header, nav, and then I'm ready to do that one. Um, content, and then the last one I need at the moment is footer. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this open close thing is to get in the habit of doing that because if you accidentally leave off for example this close oops, that curl, closing curly quote the entire style sheet from there on down is basically dead so nothing is going to happen so it's really important that you open and close these curly quotes so that's why I'm doing it even before I start putting anything in there Okay, so now I'm ready to I have a header, setup, nav, content, footer. And let's just um, start by giving them those colors just so I can see what's what. So I think we had um, yellow. I may get these colors wrong, but let's fake it. No, I think the header was red. So we're going to use the CSS property called background color. Notice there's a hyphen there, background color, colon, um, red. Um, the nav, this may not match to my sample, I don't remember what I did, but okay. So let's make the nav, we don't want to make it blue because link colors are blue. So if we made it, gave it a blue background, we wouldn't be able to see those links. That would be pretty much a disaster. Uh, so in this case, all right, so I'm going to make the background color yellow. Now to speed this up a little bit, I'm just going to copy that. And I know I want to have a background color in each of these, so I'm just going to put this in each one, and then I'm going to go back and change what it is. Um, all right, so background color. Yellow. background color aqua and you notice I'm actually using one of these 17 colors so there's actually 17 colors that are specifically defined in CSS um, and these are the only ones that you can be sure are always going to work in CSS there are other ways of defining colors other than names but these are its names are just quick and easy so I'm going to use those for now and purple this is going to be really oh no what you know what can't use purple because after you click on a link it turns purple so that's not going to work either so let's try oh let's try fuchsia I think this is going to be gorgeous um, okay so now what I've done is to each of my IDs I've added a CSS rule that declares what the color is background color red background color yellow background color aqua background color fuchsia that is going to be really pretty um, all right, nothing happened. What's up? Okay, well, of course nothing happened because in my style sheet, I've defined footer, content, header, nav. But notice down here in the body, in the actual HTML itself, those names don't appear anywhere. So how do we know, how does the browser know, where it wants us to use those particular CSS rules. Well at this point it doesn't so we have to tell it. So this is the first div um, that we're calling header. So what I have to say is you know what's the name of that? So I'm going to ID, remember that's what we're using is IDs, ID equals quote header close quote. This one ID equals quote nav close quote this one ID equals quote content close quote and this one down here ID equals quote footer close quote 
All right, so now we've told the browser via the HTML that this div here is the one we're calling footer. This div here is the one we're calling content. This div here is the one we're calling nav. Notice open div, close div. And this div here is the one we're calling header. All right, so let's save that and see if we've done anything. Woohoo! All right, there it is. So, no problem telling what's what at this point. Um, all right, so, so far so good. We're really making some progress here. Now, the next thing we want to do, I mean, we could leave it like this. It would be, um, you know, not the greatest web page in the world, but it's sort of functional. Could be worse. Readability is really a problem. I'm not recommending you use these colors uh, for anything that you want people to read because it's pretty tough. But um, it's just a little more fun to do it this way when you're doing the basic um, messing around with setting up sections of the page. So the main thing that we want to do, and actually if we can get this to work the way we want, we're pretty much done. The main thing we want is we want this nav to be narrower off on the left by itself, and we want this content to move up alongside of it. So that's not terribly difficult, but it's going to take a couple of steps to get there. By the way, please disregard these um, little black boxes that keep popping up. It's something I probably should have turned off um, before I started the demo, but um, it's actually Twitter tweets popping up as people are posting them. Um, if you've got ADD, don't do this. All right, now, so let's go back to what we have here and try and make it a little bit more like the standard web page we all know and love. So I want to work with this ID called nav because we want to take the nav, we want to make it narrower, we want to have it on the left, and we want that content to move up alongside of it. So we're going to have to do something with the content too. But let's start with the nav. So I have a CSS rule. I want to add another one. So I have to put a semicolon here to make it clear I'm starting another one. And um, I want to give this a width. Now I'm going to say probably 150 pixels. Again, no space after the number is probably going to be about right. And just in case I may want to add something else, I'm going to put a semicolon there. So it's a good habit when you're doing uh, this uh, attribute value, I'm sorry, property, background color, value, yellow, uh, put that semicolon after every one of them just in case you later want to add something to it. So if it's only one line like this, you don't need that semicolon because there's nothing that follows it. But if it's multiple lines, you always need to separate them by semicolon. So I'm just going to try and add that automatically just so I don't forget. All right, let me save this, see what's happened. Okay, good, beautiful. So uh, we're partway there. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we just made this piece the width of the page minus this 150 pixels and then it just popped up alongside. Well, it would, but it's not really going to do that. Um, because in part, one of the things you have to remember is that there is no width defined for the whole page. It's whatever width the browser window is. So we can't really tell the content be 700 pixels or 900 or 400 because it can change. So we have to do something a little bit differently. There's a property in CSS called float. And if you set something to float like this yellow div that's called nav, you can float it to the left or float it to the right. If we float it to the left, it moves to the left, which means it'll look pretty much like it already is. But whatever follows it will slide up alongside of it, which is pretty close to what we want to happen here. Not perfect, but so let's just try that. We're going to take the nav. So we've given a, we have a color, we have a width, and now we're going to do this thing called float. And we want it to float to the left. All right, so the only two options are float left and float right can't float center. I know you're going to want to do that, but you can't do it. Ta-da! 
All right, so now we're getting even closer. We have a couple of issues right now. Um, the biggest issue is that the footer, which we want to be down here, has floated right up alongside of, or right up below, right below the content, um, which is what it should do ba based on how we have it set up, but we want to change that. So we're going to leave the content alone. It's floating pretty much where we want it to be. But the footer, which is just following the content, um, that's not what we want. We want the footer to actually come down below this nav. So what we want it to do is we want it to clear the nav. So in other words, rather than being here, we want it to wait um, Till the nav ends and then pop into place and so the way we do that is we say clear and we want it to clear what's on the left that's the nav so we're going to say clear left all right so we've told the footer to basically wait until you hit the bottom of this nav and then pop into place like that Okay, so now we're almost where we want to be for today. Um, we could tweak some things here, but I guess right now there's only one more thing that we're going to do, and then we're going to pretty much call it a day. And that's deal with this issue that right now everything just assumes the size of the web browser window. Uh, there may be times when you want this to happen but often you don't. So what we want to do is we want to take everything and we want to give it a particular width and I'm going to say let's try 800 pixels just for the heck of it. So we want everything here to be no more than 800 pixels wide. Now how are we going to do this? We could give each one of them a width. We could say this is 800 pixels and this is 800 pixels and now this we already said is 150 pixels so this one would be roughly uh, 800 minus 150 so 650 pixels um, and that would work but there's actually a better way to do that and I'll explain 